extraordinary. G'day everyone, I'm Reese, and welcome to my home reviews. Today I'm going to talk about a film that now told me... Um, uh, hold on a second. I'm sure I had it here somewhere. Where did I leave it? What are you looking for, Reese? Ow! Oh! Oh! Ah! Ah! Oh! oh. Hey Steph, I'm just looking for the DVD that I was going to review today, but I've seemed to have misplaced it. Well, I can help you find the DVD for you. That is, if you want to. Well, that's very kind of you, Steph. Thanks. I very much appreciate that. But the only question I have on my mind is, um, what movie are you going to talk about anyway? Well, actually, it's... That? Oh my gosh, I love that movie, and the character it's based on! Oh, it's totally one of my favourite movies of all time. Uh, don't worry, I'll go find it right now! If you haven't guessed already, we're going to be talking about Blinky Bill. Blinky Bill, yes, that lovable koala that's such an icon, it's hard not to recognise him. From just starting out in several book series wrote by Dorothy Well, Blinky Bill has soon reached its popularity in recent years as a national icon for Australia, as well as the books being children's classics. So much so that he would later spark into many different ranges in the franchise. Such as toys, TV shows, DVDs, and many special appearances on many theme parks. But today I'm going to talk about a certain film that's not only made Blinky Bill more recognisable, but also brought Blinky Bill from the small pages to the big screen. I found it, Reese! I've got the DVD right here! Thank you, Steph. Today we're going to be taking a look at Blinky Bill, the mischievous koala. Released in 1992, this animated motion picture was the first time Blinky Bill made its way to the silver screen, as well as being the first to be based on the books by Dorothy Wilm. Produced by Jorn Gross's animation company, they helped to bring this cheeky little koala to be an international movie star. So today I'll be talking about my own personal opinions on this film to see if it still holds up. Let's not wait any longer, let's journey deep into the forest with Blinky Bill, the mischievous koala. The film opens up with a wonderful shot of the animals' home in the old Aussie bush, as it soon cuts to see Blinky Bill and the other residents of Green Patch, that's actually the town's name, I'm not kidding, dancing to a music on the record player. Ah, there's nothing more than a nice country music to help start the film. It's so wonderful, isn't it? This also gives us the introduction to the main characters of the film, like Blinky Bill, Flaps, Wombat, Miss Magpie, Marcia, Splodge, and many more, all being voiced by Keith Scott and Robin Moore. Say they're like the Mel Blanc and June Foray actors of this film, it's really amazing! The film is also done in live action, with the characters being traditionally animated, like Roger Rabbit and Space Jam. But then I noticed this in the following scene. So the humans are animated as well. I thought they'd be live action while the animals would be 2D animated. You know what? I'll let it pass. The next day, the two humans we saw earlier are named Harry and Jack, who have come to the forest to chop down some trees so they can burn it for their wood chip mill. Which ones do we cut down? All of them. We can't do that, boss. Oh, can't we? Okay, you're the boss. You know, I'm sure the animals in the bush will be fine. I mean, it's not like their homes are going to be like destroyed or anything. My gosh! Emergency! Emergency! Evacuate! Oh no! Oh no! The poor animals is home! Emergency! Oh my god! Oh my god! This is terrible! Uh, uh, somebody called Triple Zero! This is a crime scene we're seeing here! That got 
intense. I mean, this little sequence draws the attention of how sad it is to see these charming animal characters having to have their homes destroyed. I mean, the way it's shot, animated, the pacing, even when they show all the trees chopped down and gone and having to all the animals have to find shelter now. It's very dramatic in its atmosphere. It's like something out of the Lorax. I'm starting to think like after that there'll be a protest about saving the trees. Oh wait, I think somebody's already doing that right now. Save the tree! Save the tree! Yeah. After that, Blinky Bill comes out of the tree that hit him in earlier, as he soon finds another koala trapped under a tree named Nutsy. He manages to free her out and brings her along to safety. What's your name? I'm... Um... Uh, I don't know. You're Sir Blinkalot the Third. That's what your real name is. Nah, I'm just kidding, he just has amnesia. As they soon run into Wombat, who was having a cup of tea. Uh, sit down, Blinky Bill. How do you know my name? <laughs> I know all about you, my lad. So Wombat starts telling the two koalas about Blinky's memory, as we've gone back years ago to see everyone celebrating Mrs. Koala giving birth to a healthy baby koala. Aw, isn't that the most cutest baby animal you ever seen in your life? You know what? Move over, baby Yoda. Here's the next cutest thing for the whole world to enjoy. I hope they make toys out of him. A few ages later, Blinky Bill grows up to be a tricky, mischievous, naughty little boy he is. I would call the police on you, but then again, we don't have police around here for some reason. It's kind of weird. Even at school, he causes trouble. Because, you know, kids our age, we would not like school and just make trouble about it. Oh, yeah, not literally. As Blinky wanders off from school, he saws a mother frog trying to teach her kids to croak. So I want you to sing with me now. Noise. <laughs> Froggy, froggy, ribbits. One, two, three. Ribbit. Ribbit. And now it is time for your local barbershop quartet featuring singing frogs because this dang animated movie must have musical numbers including frogs that can sing. So Blinky offers to help Mother Frog to teach her kids to croak, but in reality he just juggles them that he really should concern about the safety of children, but he falls into the water and the Mother Frog catches the kids. Meanwhile, back at class... The subject we are going to learn is called arithmetic. It's as easy as can be, just repeat it after me. One and one are two. One and one are two. You know what? This math song is so catchy, I should convince schools to play it when they're teaching about numbers. They will love it. Where have you been? Been here all the time, miss. Then perhaps, Master Bill, you would be so good as to sing the arithmetic song for us. Okay. La 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 la. 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 Go. Here we go again. Goodbye. After much walking, Blinky Bill comes across a little cafe and sees that there's food inside. Hey, 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 come on now. Apples are very delicious. They're healthy, they give you plenty of energy, and they go very well with fruit salad. It's gone stale. Maybe if we have a bit of sugar to it. Soon enough, Blinky starts making a mess of things until the owner of the place notices him and catches him in a crate. Okay lady, I know you hate koalas, but you don't have to keep hitting him in the box while singing about how much you hate koalas. Do we have to call you the koala killer from now on? Right, 
two minutes. It's the zoo for you. What? Oh, come on, it's not that bad. I heard Steve Irwin is a great animal caretaker when it comes to koalas. After that, he returns home with a very stern punishment from his mom, to say the least. Ha, ha. Oh, I've been murdered! I know it hurts, but now perhaps you'll remember to be a good boy. Okay, Blinky, where did you get that book from? I, I, I don't remember seeing the scene where you got the book and- Oh, oh, the flashback just ended. Never mind, carry on. Poor Mum. I shouldn't have done it. I feel sorry for her now. Golly, I bet she's really worried. With all this going on. Now this little statement really blends in into Blinky's characteristics. Showing that even though he is mischievous, naughty, and gets into trouble all the time, but out of all of that, he still has a good heart with his friends, and especially his mother. We can all identify that, seeing how we were troublemakers as kids, but we still had a good relationship with people around us. So this can totally be relatable to us in a very grand way, as well as kids. And besides, at least that's more heart than Bart Simpson did. Oh, toss off! Don't act like you haven't noticed it already! So as they went off to the campsite where all the other animals are, they come across Blinky's grandmother as they sail across the river on a wooden draft, until they finally reach the site. Blinky asks if they know if his mother made it out alive. Well, they explain it. She was in a house, wouldn't come out. Oh, I begged her to come with us. Come with us, Mrs. Koala, quick, they're destroying the village! I'm not going anywhere. Never. Why should I go? They can't make me leave. I was born here. And don't die in this tree if I have to, if that results in me never seeing my devilish son ever again. So go life, everybody! I will remember you. Later that night, Blinky reckons that if his mom is not here or anywhere in the bush, he thinks she might be where the humans took their lumber. So he sets off on his journey with Nutsy tagging along. Rats! I forgot! I never learned how to swim! Maybe I should have stayed in school for a reason! Hey, don't lie to me. I saw you hardly got the grips to do a freestyle with your own paws. You'll never enter into this year's Olympics. They finally arrive at the woodcutter's home as he tries calling out for his mother to see if she's there. But no reply came back, which also leads to this cute shot. Aww. But Blinky and Nutsy also see all the wood which once was their homes now being used to burn in the mill. The next morning, things don't go well for the two koalas. So, so, sorry, never mind. The, the machine turned off and, and they're still alive and well. False alarm, everybody! But that image will still hunt you for life. I'm so cruel. So later at night, with Blinky's mom nowhere in sight, they soon got spotted by two guard dogs and Harry, who throws Blinky out while the dogs chase after Nutsy, as she soon climbed up the house into the child's bedroom. There, a girl named Clara, who likes koalas too, she is very delighted that a real-life koala is in her bedroom. And it's the only time that a human and a koala bond together in this franchise. Strange, isn't it? Actually, speaking of koalas, where is Steph? He was here a few minutes ago, but he's gone. Oh well, I'll find him later. The next morning, Blinky assigns Marcia and Jacko to fly over to the woodcutter's place to take notes of the house and its surroundings. <laughs> Um, that's a bathroom, not a bedroom. They're, they're two different things, you know. 
In the kitchen, Clara shows the koala to the family, but they are not pleased for having a wild animal living in their home, as they suggest on taking her to the zoo. Marcia also hears about this and writes it down in her notebook. You lazy bird! So with all the information Marcia has gathered, Blinky decides to form a rescue party, for when they arrive, their plan has been put into action. <laughs> they reach the inside of the house and found the child's bedroom, but Blinky says they need a gun because... animals need security of some sort, I don't know. But the plans start to go a bit out of control as they soon start a commotion as Splodge is being chased by the two dogs and Jack trying to shoot him while Blinky holds the door as Flap and Marcia try to look for Nutsy. Costs like twenty five dollars at Woolies. So Blinky finds Nutsy at last, but not knowing there was a child also in that wardrobe. But not to worry, she's alive and well. As the two soon join the others in a thrilling fight, which I like to call Nature versus Humanity. Music. have a sword fight with this guy. My name is Blinky Bill. You killed my mother. Prepare to die. Poor drowning fellow, and he just gives up straight away. Blinky, your turbo advisor. So after taking care of most of the humans, the animals decide to take a car out of here and back to the bush. But Blinky hears a familiar voice beneath the logs, which actually turns out to be his mum. Just like that, I mean, with just that, with like that, and <laughs> But this last words was so touching, it just makes you want to cry. What can I say? Blinky Bill, the mysterious call, is a fun, enjoying film to watch with charming characters, good mix between live action animation, and very nice little songs. With a bit of an environmental message, which a lot of animated movies were doing at the time, but I think this one does it better. While the animation is not groundbreaking like Disney animation, it's still pretty good animation and very expressive. 
With all that said, Blinky Bill will still continue to be a fascinating character that will live on in newer generations, as most cartoon characters will. And this film will definitely have that too. So it's great for me to say this film gets a recommendation to watch and it deserves a 9 out of 10. Thank you for watching today's review, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all- Reese, Reese, would you come out here for a minute, please? I wonder what he's doing. Hey Steph, what's up? Okay, this may sound a bit crazy, but look up there. Oh, I just said to the pirate that you'll pay him thirty dollars for his Hawaiian pizza in exchange for the flag. What? You know what? It's always good to wear people about such things. True, true. Well, we'll see you all next time. Bye. Just to get